Let's get straight into it. Does the book of Revelation talk about a time in history, about a one world government, a new world order, and the Great Reset? Is this connected with the mark of the beast? Let's get straight into the text. Now, if you're not aware, I've already made quite a few short videos on this. They will appear on YouTube in order, okay, and in Facebook. But let's launch right, right off into this. Does the book of Revelation describe a time in history of a one world government, a new world order, the mark of the beast and the great reset? What does the book of Revelation say? Is this future? Is it present? Is it past? Is it in the Bible anywhere? Or is it just a big myth? Let's get into it. Today, I'm going to demonstrate two things. Number one, that the book of Revelation does speak about a future one world government. Without a shadow of a doubt, a future event. And I will show you the texts that I use to establish this. Also, I'm going to share with you how this subject has been greatly misunderstood. Okay? As soon as I finish, this will appear immediately on my Facebook. So, does the book of Revelation talk about a future one world government? Well, before we look at a future one world government, does it talk about a time in history that there will be a one world government? Revelation 13, 1 and 3. Let's get going. Let me just have a drink. Okay, Revelation 13, 1 <clears throat> And 13.3, the dragon, who is the devil, stood on the sea shore. And I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads. So the dragon, the devil, has gone out to the beach and he calls up a beast from the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns. Look how the world responds to this beast from the sea with seven heads and ten horns. Verse 3, one of the heads, it had seven, one of the heads of this beast seemed to have had a fatal wound. One of the heads died, but the wound was healed. And the world was filled with wonder, and the world followed the beast. Wow. John is describing an event in this book, where the whole world will follow after the beast. What is this beast? Is this beast the one world government? Yes. And I'm going to show you that and also that it is yet to appear. Okay, let's keep going on. This same beast with seven heads and ten horns appears <clears throat> in chapter 17 of the book of Revelation. Chapter 17, verse 3, we read this. Then the angel carried me away into the spirit, into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a beast covered with blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. There's that beast again. Revelation 13 and Revelation 17 go together, okay? And I'm going to go one step further. You'll notice that in chapter 13, I'm going to give you a chronological synchronization between the relationship between 13 and 17, these two chapters. Which one comes before which? Listen, there was a big hint. Back in chapter 13, the beast had one of its heads. It, was, it received a mortal wound. Then it came back to life. And then the world followed after the beast. So the beast in chapter 13... One of his heads died, came back to life. And then the world followed after the beast. And it had seven heads and ten horns. In chapter 17, it's going to go one step further. Chapter 17 takes place before chapter 13. Just keep it under your hat, just for a minute, that in chapter 13, the beast dies, comes one of the heads dies, comes back to life again. And then the world follows. So it's describing events after the beast comes back to life, after one of the heads is dead. Okay, and comes back to life. Just keep that in mind. Because chapter 17, this event hasn't happened yet, but it's the same beast. So chapter 17 takes place just before chapter 13. This is just beside the point. 
chapter 17, verse 3. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a beast that was covered in blasphemous names and it had seven heads and ten horns. This is the same beast of Revelation 13. And this is going to become very clear. Have a look at verses 7 to 12. The beast is identified. The beast with seven heads and ten horns is identified. It's identified. It's identified. We're not left in the dark. What we know so far from Revelation 13 is that when part of this beast power dies and comes back to life, after that, the world will follow this beast. Chapter 17 picks it up and now tells us that this beast power, this beast power with seven heads and ten horns is the one world government. Look. Shame chapter, chapter 17 of Revelation, 7 to 12. Look, it's identified. The beast with seven heads and ten horns is identified. Now listen carefully. We're going to read quite a few verses here. Verses 7 to 12. And the angel said to me, Why are you astonished, John? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and the beast she rides. Two powers, yeah? Please note that. The deception is people follow, just focus on the one world government, right? The new world order. That's not the whole truth. And if you're looking just there, you could get misled. There's two figures here, two identities, two entities. I will explain to you about the mystery of the woman, the harlot woman of Babylon, and the beast she rides. Okay? But for today, we, I've already gone into the woman. Today, we're going to identify the beast that the woman rides. I'm going to identify for you the mystery of the woman and the beast she rides, which has seven heads and ten horns. He's going to explain and identify this beast with seven heads and ten horns that the whole world will follow after. It's the one world government. Watch. Verse 8. The beast which you saw once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. And the inhabitants of the earth, this beast, with seven heads and ten horns, the inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast, the beast, because it once was, now is not, and yet will come. The world will follow after the beast after it comes back to life again. In Revelation 13, it already came back to life. Chronological synchronization. Do you see that? At this point in time, the beast with seven heads and ten horns has not yet come back to life. In Revelation 13, it dies and it comes back to life. So Revelation 13 takes place after Revelation 17. That's a big clue. Okay? Leave that for another time. But one thing's for sure, John is now going to tell us what who this beast with seven heads and ten horns is. Yeah? This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads on the beast are seven hills upon which the woman Babylon sits. They are also seven kings. Stop! The beast with seven heads, these seven heads are seven kings. The Greek says kingdoms. Okay? They are seven kings, seven kingdoms. The beast represents a conglomerate of world powers. The heads, seven heads are seven kings. What about the rest of it? The horns and the beast itself. They are seven kings. Five of these kings have fallen. One is, the other is not yet come. But when he does, he will remain only a little while. The beast who once was, now is not, is the eighth king. The beast is a king. The heads are seven kings. And what about the ten horns? Verse 12. The ten horns you saw are ten kings. Kings, kings, and the beast himself is a king. And that beast himself who is the king is the figurehead, the leader of this conglomerate of world powers. Now listen carefully. Verse 12. Have we yet got, so definitely the beast is a king, the heads are kings, the horns are kings. But look what it says about this power. Yeah, 
all the world powers. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom yet. <gasps> this event in history is taking place just before the formation of the one world government. Wow. Yeah. Look at verse 12. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom yet. And other passages, again, to talk about when they do come together. We're going to get to that in a minute. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, not yet, but who for one hour receive authority as kings along with the beast. Stop! The heads are kings. The horns are kings. The beast is the figurehead, chief king. Here we've got events described that are not yet united. They have not received a kingdom yet with the beast. Yeah? But when the heads, the, the horns, unite together with the beast, who is also a king, you have the formation of the one world government. When will this take place? Was this past? Is it present? Is it future? The book of Revelation answers this question unequivocally. Okay? But let me keep you on track. It's not just the union of the world empires as described here. It's when Babylon, the harlot woman, rise on the united uh, kings, political leaders of the world. That's when you've got the end time. Yeah? Babylon must ride the beast with seven heads and ten horns, the one world government. Babylon must ride the one world government. That's when you've got the very end time. And this union is only going to happen for a short period of time. Look at verse 12. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, still hasn't, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. It's a very short unity. When the one world government comes together, when Babylon rides her, Babylon is the villain here, yeah? When you get one world government being ridden by the harlot Babylon, this unity, one world government's only going to happen for one hour. Very brief, but it will be a very intense period of history. So, the horns are kings, the heads are kings, the beast is a king. He is the primary king. The horns and the heads will come into union with the beast, right? This is the one world government, but this won't happen until Babylon surfaces, Babylon surfaces, Babylon surfaces. Keep your eye on Babylon, not just governments doing things together in unity. When Babylon appears and takes control and brings all these political powers of the world together, you're at the end then. It hasn't happened yet. Now, you can say, but Santa, this could have happened in 70 AD or during the Dark Ages or, or whenever. How can you prove that it's still future? Okay, let me show you clearly from the text that this is still a future event. Revelation 17.1. 1. one thing's for sure. The unity of, of the world government, when it actually comes together and hangs together as a unity, only appears when Babylon appears. And most people got no idea about Babylon. And they're just looking, oh, the governments are doing this in unity. This is the end. Um, that could lead to the formation of the one world government. But it won't form until Babylon appears. It won't form until Babylon appears. Have a look at Revelation 17, 1 to 5. It's crystal clear. This is where the deception is. People are just looking for a one world government. But this has no significance until Babylon appears and rides it and tells it what to do. Listen carefully about the relationship between Babylon and the one world government. They will come together when Babylon appears to save the world. Revelation 17, 1 to 5. <clears throat> one of the seven angels who had the seven plagues came and said to me, Come, John, I'm going to show you the punishment of the great prostitute Babylon. The focus straight away is on Babylon. Yeah, not the beast, not the one world government. But, but, but it's going to be instrumental. Come, I'll show you the punishment of the great prostitute Babylon, 
who sits on many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery. With Babylon, the kings of the earth. With Babylon appears the kings of the earth. So don't just focus on all the kings of the earth coming into union to form a one world government. That will only be significant when Babylon appears. And with the great prostitute Babylon, with her, the kings of the earth unite, commit adultery. Okay? So we are to play significance on a one world government when Babylon, the harlot, appears. Now, I've already done five videos on this. Who is the harlot? And we will go back to that shortly. But what's the purpose of today's teaching? Santo, this one world government stuff's not in the Bible. Well, it is. Yeah. Ask uh, Santo, this happened in the past. Now I'm going to show, no, it's still yet to come. Okay? It's still future. Once we have established that this one world government in connection with the harlot woman Babylon come into union, if I can prove all that happens yet, it's still not happened, it's still in the future, then we can go back to the text and say, right, well, really, we now know this is about the future. Okay? Then I won't have to keep proving this over and over again. So that's what we're doing. So don't just look for all the kings of the earth to come into unity. It's when the great prostitute who rides her and then the uh, united uh, kings come and they let Babylon control her. Yeah? That's the focus we need to look at. And Babylon has not risen yet. Babylon has not risen yet. Okay? So we're not there yet. Verse 3, Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw the woman Babylon sitting on the beast, covered with seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her idolat uh, adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth. So please, it's clear that the focus of the one world government only comes into prominence when the woman Babylon the harlot appears when the woman Babylon harlot appears then you'll have a short union of all the political powers on the earth and they will give their power to the woman she will ride them she will direct them to carry out her bidding so don't just focus on the governments coming together the focus here is on the woman riding the governments of the world when that happens it'll be a brief union one hour now, couldn't this be the past? How do I know it's the future? Well, okay. The rising and appearance of Babylon, the woman, the, uh, the harlot, riding on the one world government, that event is connected to other events, which clearly tell us when in history this is going to take place. Babylon will ride the, the, the one world government in conjunction with other worldwide events. And when you read these other events, it's clear this has not yet happened. Okay? Let's have a look at some other events that are connected with the rise of Babylon, the short union of the one world government, and Babylon rides her. How do we know this is future? Because certain things will happen when this union takes place and they are clearly in the future. Okay? Let's have a look at Revelation chapter 16. Why? <clears throat> Revelation 17 speaks about the rise of Babylon controlling the one world government. So Revelation 17 speaks about the woman, harlot, Babylon, and speaks about the beast. Yeah? These two powers as are described in Revelation 17 as coming into union for a short period of time. Both these powers are also described in chapter 16. Chapter 16 is going to describe events that take place after the union comes together. In chapter 17, what did we read? They have not come into union yet. They have not received a united kingdom yet. I made that point very, very clear, okay? Chapter 16 takes place after the union of all the world political powers has taken place. 
after the kingdom has come together, certain events will happen. Chapter 16, we'll talk about Babylon and we'll talk about the one world government and it will talk about it in the context of after they have come together. Okay, so let's now go to chapter 16 of Revelation and let's have a look what it says about Babylon and the beast. Okay, Babylon and the beast. Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out your seven plagues of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his plague on the land. And ugly festering sores broke out on people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. Stop. Seven last plagues. The beast and his image has already come. It's already happening. They had already received the mark of the beast, past tense, and they had already worshipped its image. Okay? So this is a, a, a future event at the time of the seven last plagues. Now let me just nail that for you. This event is connected to other events described in the, in the book of Revelation, which are clearly future. So what I'm saying so far is this. In Revelation 17, you've got the woman rides the beast, and this, this will happen only for a short period of time. But at chapter 17, they have received no united kingdom yet. In Revelation uh, 16, the mark of the beast has come and nearly gone, and they worshipped, and now they're getting smashed. They're getting the plagues, okay? Now, look at this. This event is clearly future as we keep reading on through the plagues. That's plague number one. Let's have a look at plague number five, six, and seven. And look about and uh, look how this connects it with the coming together in union of the um, one world government. Yeah? Revelation 16, 10 to 21. We're going to read the lot. In these passages, you're going to have Babylon mentioned. You're going to have the beast mentioned. You're going to have the kingdom of the beast mentioned. You're going to have the mark of the beast mentioned and you're going to find about this union between Babylon and the one world government comes apart. It's after. It's future. And it connects it with specific events on planet Earth. It's events on planet Earth that have not yet happened, which clearly means this is still future. The one world government is not past. It's future. Revelation 16, 10 to 21. Plague number five. The fifth angel poured out its plague on the throne of the beast and its kingdom. Stop! In chapter 17, the beast had not received its kingdom yet. Did the penny drop? In chapter 17, they had not received the kingdom yet. Now in chapter 16, the one before, the fifth plague is poured out on the throne of the beast and its kingdom. The kingdom has now come together and it's getting punished. The events of chapter 16 are the seven last plagues that come after the formation of the one world government and they're getting punished. The fifth angel poured out its bowl, its plague on the throne of the beast and its kingdom and it was plunged into darkness. They'd come together. Now, bang, they gave their power to the woman Babylon and they killed Christians. If you read 17.6, yeah? And now the plagues come in response. The fifth angel poured out his plague on the throne of the beast and its kingdom. It's come together. And now it's getting punished. And it was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in agony and they cursed the God of heaven because of the pains in their sores. But they refused to repent of what they had done. Now number six, plague number six. Then the sixth angel poured out its plague on the great river Euphrates. Stop. What's Euphrates got to do with this? The river Euphrates has a city sitting right on the river. Any idea what the name of that city was or is that sits on the river Euphrates? Babylon. Euphrates is the river of Babylon. Wow. So we've got a mention of the beast coming together and his throne coming together in verse 10 and the fifth plague and because of that union between Babylon and the beast, they persecute uh, the followers of Jesus, 17.6. It gets punished with the plagues. 
So verse 10 talks about the unite the one world government getting punished. And then the sixth plague, the next one, connects it with Babylon. The sixth angel poured out the plague on the great river Babylon, the river of, of Euphrates, Babylon's river. Babylon's river is Euphrates. So here we've got a reference to Babylon. Here in the sixth plague and in the seventh plague. Look. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up to prepare the way from the kings of the east. Then I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs and they came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And they are demonic spirits and they will perform signs and they will go out to the kings of the whole world. Wow. The river Euphrates, Babylon's river, dried up. This triggers the devil, the beast, and the false prophet sending out demons to trick the, the kings of the whole world to get them to battle against the great day of God Almighty. This is talking about a global universal world war where the kings of the earth are going to gather together. When Babylon is hit, its river is dried up. Soon after the, 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 the one world government gets hit with a plague, Right, The one world government gets hit with a plague. The woman who's sitting on top of them, she reacts. She reacts. And what does she do when the, her river, Euphrates, Babylon's river, is dried up? The devil gets involved. The devil, the beast, the false prophet. They get out and they send out through their mouths deceiving messages to get all the kings of the earth together for the final battle. This is future. This is talking about a global war. When Babylon's been hit, the river of Babylon, Euphrates, is dried up. Uh, the, the kingdom of the beast has come together. The woman has sat on her. They have killed the people of God. They've killed the, the people of God. Now they're getting punishment. And they say, no, we're going to retaliate. We're going to retaliate. And so once the Euphrates River, the river of Babylon, is dried up, then... The counterfeit trinity, the dragon, the beast, the false prophet, they send out deceiving spirits into the world to trick the kings of the world, yeah? That uh, one world government to come out and come out against God. Clearly future. And look at this. Now let's move into the seventh plague. Comes together. Then they gathered the, then they gathered the three unclean spirits like frogs who come in direct response to the drying up of Babylon's river, the Euphrates, all right, it's been hit, Babylon's been hit. The kingdom of, of the one world government has been hit. Now Babylon's river has been hit. The Euphrates has been hit. And so they send out demons and they go out to the kings, global event, together. They gather them together to the place in Hebrew that is called Armageddon, the battle of Armageddon. And then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and out of the temple came a voice from the throne at the seventh plague. It is done. Climactic battle. It is done. Then there came flashes of lightning and rumbles, peals of thunder and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it ever occurred since mankind had been on the earth. Climactic. This is the end. It is done. So tremendous was the quake. Verse 19. Listen. And the great city, what great city? The great city was split into three parts. And the cities of the nations collapsed. And God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the wrath of his fury. And every island fled away and the mountains could no longer be found. The beast, the woman Babylon sitting on it, lasts a short period of time. 17.6 says they hit the people of God, the followers of Jesus, and they killed them. And God said, enough. The seven last plagues fall onto this union and they split it up. When? When all the cities of the nations have collapsed, Babylon is remembered. And she receives the full wine of the fury of his wrath. Have all the cities of the nations collapsed yet? Nope. Future. It's clearly future. This is the end of the world as we now know it. This is 
concrete, unambiguous proof that this whole talk of a one world government and Babylon sitting on her, coming into union, blah, 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 all that happens when the cities of the nations all collapse, a huge earthquake that breaks up the whole world, the end of God's wrath poured out on the beast and Babylon for killing the followers of Jesus and every island fled away and the mountains disappeared. Sounds pretty future to me. Can you show me any time in Earth's history that every city of the nations collapsed and everything disappeared? It is done, it says. It is finished. It is clear that Babylon and the one world government have not yet appeared. It is future when all the cities of the nations turn against God with all their kings and God's people and then they disappear and collapse and Babylon is remembered and she's split into three, yeah? And all the, all the islands and all the mountains disappear and he says, it is done. That's when these events take place. This has not yet happened. It's global, it's cosmic, it's climactic. It's the end of the present order, okay? So it's still future. But don't be misled. Don't focus on the formation of a one world government. It's when the one world government appears in the context of Babylon, the harlot sitting on it, short lived. Yeah. What will they do? The harlot, Babylon, who I've already identified in the previous video, yeah, is going to use the political power of the one world government to kill Christians. That's what it says in 17.6. And that's why she gets the seven last plagues. And at that point in time, all the kings of the earth will come out. Yeah. And they'll try to unite against God, pillar on against God. And then bang, it is done. The seventh plague falls, huge. And um, all the cities of the nations collapse and the natural order <laughs> comes apart. That's the second coming of Jesus, folks. All the cities of the nations, that's when this will take place, when they collapse. This has not happened yet. Okay. So what about, what have I got you want to say? Okay, so we looked at the uh, the one world government, yeah? Don't focus there, focus on when Babylon appears, hasn't appeared yet, yeah? It'll come together when Babylon appears and then there will be a new world order. The new world order is called the mark of the beast because without the mark of the beast, you cannot what? Buy or sell. And that's a completely different subject, but they're all connected, yeah? That's the new world order, is the mark of the beast. Without it, you won't be able to buy or sell. So, what was the purpose of today's teaching? One, the formation of the one world government is true, and it's still future, okay? So now I have laboured that point. What we're going to do is, um, I'm going to return to identifying Babylon. Yeah, we need to focus there. But I'm not going to spend any more time proving that Revelation 17 and Revelation 18, which identifies Babylon and its demise and its judgment and its punishment, I'm not going to try to do any more saying that this was, oh, first century, let's, argue, uh, let's answer questions about whether it happened in the first century. I've dealt with it now. All this happens when all the cities of the nations come together and then they get collapsed and the natural world disappears. This is still future. Okay, so now you're just going to have to take that for granted as we go into identifying uh, who Babylon is. And I've already done that in the previous video. So God bless you. I'm going to get my little girl now and take her to a park. And I think that's all I wanted to say today. So bless you. Uh, I'll make another one maybe later today or tomorrow. Bye-bye.